Hey everyone, thanks for all the continued support and feedback on the track tools. It's been great hearing how you're using them and what improvements you'd like to see. I've been working nonstop on a major update and I'm excited to share the new beta version with you today. This isn't just a small patch, I've completely reworked the entire system from the ground up. The tools are now split into multiple modifiers instead of single monolithic ones. This gives you way more flexibility and control over each part of the process. Plus, it's much better for performance when working on larger projects. I dropped the AC from the name since these tools aren't just for Assetto Corsa anymore. You can use them for other racing games, visualizations, or really any project where you need to build roads and terrain efficiently. The workflow is different now, so if you've used the previous version, there will be some adjustments. But don't worry, I've included a tutorial blend file where you can experiment and get familiar with everything, and I'll be making dedicated tutorial videos to walk through the new workflow step by step. Let's dive in and see what's new. The biggest change is how the modifiers work. Instead of having one massive node group that does everything, I've broken each tool into separate focused modifiers. A good example is the terrain tool. It used to create a triangulated grid, subdivide it based on distance to the road, shrink wrap it to the reference terrain, and smooth the areas around roads, all in one modifier. Now that's split into three separate groups, triangulate grid, terrain geometry, and terrain shape. The triangulate grid is now much more optimized. The terrain geometry handles the adaptive subdivision and shrink wrapping, the heavy stuff that really taxes your system. Once you're happy with that, you can apply it and just work with the terrain shape modifier for the final smoothing and adjustments. This means you're not constantly recalculating expensive operations every time you tweak something small. The same principle applies to all the other tools. Each step is now independent, so you can control exactly what's being calculated in real time and disable modifiers that you don't need. Now let's talk about the feature everyone's been asking for, intersections. This was probably the most requested addition, and honestly, one of the trickiest to get working properly. I was really struggling for the first few weeks, created lots of versions with lots of different approaches, connected hundreds of nodes, and almost gave up like four times. Although this was very time consuming, I learned something new from each approach, so after some time, I was finally able to build a reliable and predictable modifier. The road tool now lets you connect roads smoothly, even when they meet at different angles or elevations. What I'm really happy about is how it handles elevation changes. That was the part that kept breaking in my early tests. Roads would connect fine on flat ground, but as soon as there was a height difference, you'd get these ugly gaps or overlapping geometry. I'll explain how it works in more detail in a dedicated video. So what else is new? The terrain can now be tiled, which is great for performance when creating large maps. You can set four different ranges to control the poly count based on distance. Sometimes four levels isn't enough for really large terrains, so the modifier can be stacked multiple times with different settings to create even more levels of subdivision. The terrain shape modifier smooths the terrain along the road, but there's a new option to delete the geometry that's under the road and not needed. This can significantly reduce the poly count. There's also a new option to create bridges and cut tunnels with the terrain shape modifier, which opens up a lot of possibilities for more complex track designs. The road edge is now generated through a separate modifier and there's a new option to use custom profiles for it. This opens the door for countless possible uses. There are new modifiers for markings and barriers with expanded functions. Both can be used as part of the road system or as standalone tools. 
By stacking the modifiers with different settings, you can create different combinations and save them as assets for later use. The tree tool was completely reworked so it now supports placing trees manually, using input objects or collections, and setting variants to different properties. I added some completely new modifiers too. There are tools for generating racing curbs, grass or sidewalk islands, and parking lines. The surface modifier lets you subdivide and randomize the road mesh to add detail or use it as a collider. Then there are a few tools to help with workflow. You can duplicate any curve to quickly create highways, double barriers, and other stuff. You can filter parts of the road system to export it separately or use it further with other modifiers. The Snap2 modifier lets you align parts of the track easily, connect road objects together and align the elevation, or use it to quickly paint in barriers along the road. There are tools for generating bridges and tunnels too. Although these work in simple cases, they'll be completely reworked since there are a lot of issues and the process isn't very intuitive yet. The last big helper is the layouts modifier. Unlike the other tools, this one is specifically designed for Assetto Corsa. It speeds up placing spawn objects and solves the naming problem when you have multiple layouts in one scene. You can add checkpoints, starting positions, pit stops, and hot lap markers easily, then switch the direction with one click. As a bonus, it generates a colored line for each layout, which can be used to render the outline image for Assetto. There's also the Track Tools AC exporter an installable add-on for exporting trees and layouts to Assetto Corsa. I don't know much about scripting, so I used AI to write it for me. You can export trees from the tree modifier in TreeFX format, which means no more need for AC foliage. It also generates correctly named spawn objects from the layouts modifier and exports them to FBX for any number of layouts in one click. Since the workflow is quite different now, I've included an interactive tutorial blend file to help you get familiar with everything. It's not a step-by-step -step walkthrough, but more like a playground where you can explore all the functions with working examples. There are descriptions of what each modifier does and you can click through them, change values to see what happens, jump into edit mode and move things around, basically experiment however you want. This hands-on approach should get you comfortable with the new system pretty quickly. I'll also be making dedicated tutorial videos for specific workflows. Just a reminder that this is still a beta release, so there might be some rough edges here and there. If you run into any issues or have suggestions, feel free to reach out on Discord. That's usually the fastest way to get in touch with me. I'm currently working through a list of small things that are either causing issues or are inconsistent across the tools. 
Nothing major, but I want to get everything polished before the final release. I'm also working on the new bridge and tunnel tools. They'll be much more intuitive than the current versions. And I completely forgot to mention the updated retaining walls tool, which I somehow left out of this version, but will be included in the next update. Thanks for being patient with the process. Um, your feedback really helps me catch things I might have missed. So that's the new track tools. Rebuilding everything was a lot of work, but the added flexibility and performance gains are definitely worth it. The beta is available now if you want to dive in and start testing. Things might still change before the final version, but you can get a head start on learning the new system. I'm excited to see what you build with these tools, especially with intersections finally working. If you make something cool, make sure to post it to my Discord server. Thanks for watching and for all your support on this project. See you next time.